I recently flew my Avanti jet using Express LRS and SBUS, and today I'm going to show you how it works. Here is a Maytech R24 P6 receiver. I've got a single connection going into a toolkit MC8, and as I move my stick, you can see I've got SBUS monitoring turned on, and you can see movement on the aileron channel and the elevator channel. So there's the SBUS out. Let me show you how I did it. I want to show you the important pins on this receiver before we get started. On the right hand side, this is with the antenna up and over to the left. On the right hand side, this is pin one. This is pin two. Pin two is where we get the S bus output. So remember that our S bus signal has to go on that wire. And then you've got pin three, four, five, and six. And then finally, this one is VBAT. I like this pin a lot. This is what I used on my jet. For now, I'm just gonna connect a lead to that VBAT pin, just one lead. You don't need ground, just one. This is gonna to go to the hot wire on our battery, the positive wire on our battery. We'll get into that more later. Just remember, single wire on VBAT. It's the very last pin over here on the left. The next thing we're going to do is plug in the receiver with our transmitter off. So I've got my transmitter turned off and I'm gonna plug the receiver in. And the reason we're gonna do that first is because I want it to go into Wi-Fi mode. There's a certain configured time that the receiver will go into Wi-Fi mode and that is indicated by this fast flashing. You can change that period in the receiver configuration via the web UI. I'll show you that in just a minute. The next thing we're gonna do is go over to the Express LRS configurator and we have to compile the binary that we're gonna put on this receiver. It's important to understand that as of early March, 2023, the SBUS code has not been pulled into the mainline branch of Express LRS yet. So you really need to treat this as experimental. Now, the way we compile the firmware is you load up Express LRS Configurator. I'll have a link in the description, so don't worry if you've never downloaded it. You can go to the link in the description and pull down the configurator, and you're going to go to Git Pull Request. Since a pull request for this software has been made to integrate it into the main code, it's now selectable as a pull request branch directly in the configurator. And the one we're looking for is RX Serial Refactor number 2094. That's the one that's got the SBUS code in it. The next thing you need to do is configure your category. For the Maytech R24 P6, use 2.4 gigahertz DIY. And for the device, we use DIY 2400 RX PWMP EX, okay? We're also gonna flash this over Wi-Fi, so I'll leave that selected. And then come down and choose the rest of your options that you'd like. Remember I told you about that Wi-Fi on time that you can configure? You can set that right here. So if you wanna set it to say 20 seconds, you can set it to 20, you can set it to 60, whatever. Put in your home SSID if you wanted to connect to your home network. I found this is a little bit of flaky, at, le at least on the initial boot. It doesn't always connect to the home network, but whatever, plug it in and try it if you want. And then put in your binding phrase. After that, you simply go down and hit the build button. If you've never built an Express LRS binary before, this will take some time. So there you go, the, the binary's been built, and you can see we've got two options here. This one's the name of the binary, and this one's just called Firmware Bin. I like to use this one because it's very descriptive, that way I know what I've got and I know what I flash. So we'll just put that on the desktop, and that will allow us now to go over to our network connections over here on the right and take a look and see that we have our Express LRS in AP mode, and I'm gonna click connect on that. If you're on a Mac or some other operating system, you'll have to figure out how to connect to different SSIDs on your own, on Windows, there you go, that's what it looks like. It does take a little bit of time sometimes to connect, but just let it do its work, and once it connects, we'll be able to get to the receiver via our web browser. Okay, now it's connected, and we should be able to go back to our Express LRS configurator, and you can see it's popped up, and it says Express LRS RX uh, has shown up as a new device, we'll click select. And then if we go down here to the bottom and just click on this little address, 10001, that will bring up a web browser directly to the receiver page. The next thing to do is configure the receiver. So I'm gonna click on the model tab and we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna look for channel two. And under channel two, we wanna scroll all the way down here to serial TX. And you'll notice when we do that, that channel two goes gray and channel three goes gray. And the reason channel three goes gray is because if you use a bi-directional protocol like CRSF, for example, then you need a TX pin and an RX pin. In our case, we're using SBUS, and with SBUS, we only need one channel for transmit, and in this case, it's channel two. 
Channel 2 is the Serial TX. Channel 3 is grayed out, so I'm not sure if we can use that for PWM or not, but Channel 3 will show up in your SBUS stream, so don't worry about that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to remap some channels. Now, the way this is going to work is the SBUS stream is going to contain channels 1 through 16. So I'll put my AETR controls in the first four channels, and then if I have a mode or a gain switch, I'll put those in you know channels 5 or 6. But I also may want to use the PWM output and the way I'm going to manage that is I'm going to change channel 1 to channel 11 and I'm going to change channel 4 from 4 to 14 and channel 5 from 5 to 15 and channel 6 from 7 to 16. Now what this means is my PWM channels match up with their pin number plus 10. So pin number 1 is 11, that's a PWM channel. Uh, pin number four is 14, PWM channel, five is 15, and six is 16, and so on. So that's it. Now we've done a pin remap, and we've set up the receiver to output SBUS. I'm going to go down to this button down here that says Save, and then I will go over to the main page under Options, and I'll hit Save and Reboot. And what I'm looking for on the receiver is for the receiver to start flashing again. It'll go into AP mode, but those changes are now saved. We're done. There it is in AP mode, but we don't care about that right now. I'm gonna disconnect power, and the next thing I'm gonna do is bring the radio back in, and I'm gonna turn the radio on, because when you're at the field, you should always turn your radio on first. Make sure we get through any warnings. The next thing we'll do is plug our SBUS lead into channel two. Remember what I told you, the SBUS stream leaves this receiver on channel two. And once you've done that, if you have a monitor or anything else that can let you visualize SBUS out, you can bring that up and you should see movement on SBUS. Okay, so that's the basic SBUS configuration. Remember, channels one through 16 are in the SBUS stream. So if you want to use those on some device that can understand SBUS, feel free. If you want to use channels 11, 14, 15, and 16 for PWM, I'm going to show you that next. But before I do, remember our handy little VBAT lead? Let me show you how this works. If you look at the radio right now, you can see I've got no voltage on RX BAT. But when I connect this little pin to the balance port, and I'm using the second one, remember on a balance port, the far right is ground, and then the first pin will be cell number one, number two, and number three. So if you want the receiver to monitor just a single cell, which is actually a good configuration because then you could use the same logic for everything, you can plug it into the second pin and you'll always be monitoring one cell voltage. So you can use that. You can say 4.2 is high, 3.7 is low. I want to trigger my alarms at 3.7. And the reason I suggest that is because that logic will work no matter what size battery you use. But if you want to use the entire pack voltage, you can go to the far end of the lead, plug it into the last pin, and you'll see the overall series voltage of this battery. If you have something a little more complex, like a 12S connection, you can also take this tap and apply it to your XT60 line in between the two batteries, but measure with a voltmeter first because the VBAT pin on this only goes up to 36 volts. So you don't want to plug it into the wrong side and blow up your VBAT sensor or the receiver. Make sure you measure with a multimeter first so you know where to plug in up to 36 volts. All right, that takes care of the SBUS and VBAT configurations. So that's how you get the SBUS part to work. Now let's take a look at PWM. For PWM on the MC8, we're gonna click on the little jog dial and we're gonna scroll over to PWM and click OK again. Now remember, in my configuration, I'm at pin four to channel 14. So if I look at these pins from the right, it's one, two, three, four, that's the one I want. Pin number four, we're just gonna plug that one in. And then on my radio, real quick, I'm gonna show you my mixer so you can see the mixer settings that I have on channel 14, I've got SD operating as a gear switch. Now we'll take a look at the monitor and you'll see when I move SD, we should see movement on the PWM. See there's up and we're at 991 and there's down, we're at 2014. On my gear, I used channel 15. So I'll move my pin over to channel 15 and connect it. So that's the PWM monitor now on channel 15. And on the radio configuration, you can see I've got that assigned to my right slider for flaps. So I'm just gonna move this over here, bring this guy back into view, and I'm gonna move my slider switch. And you can see there's the PWM output. All right, that's a 16 channel setup. Real easy to understand that one, but if you wanna use an eight channel setup in order to preserve some latency or bandwidth on your link, you can do that as well. Just remember one thing, ExpressLRS needs channel five. So if you're gonna do a remap, 
you, and you want to use some channels outside of PWM, let's use a gyro for example. If you use a gyro with AETR and your mode switch and your gain switch going through the gyro, that means you need six channels into the gyro, which means you only have three left. Keep in mind, channel five is a binary and it really should be called 8.1. So what you do in that case is set aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder on channels one through four. You'd set your arm on channel five, set your mode on channel six, set your gain on channel seven, and then you can use eight and nine on the receiver. So we would go into pin four and change that to channel eight, and we'll go into pin five and change that to channel nine. And then on pin six, you can just leave it on channel 16. It's going to be ignored anyway. One more thing you need to understand in order to make this work is you have to open your Express LRS Lua script and make sure that you have your switch mode set to 16 channels. If you choose to do eight channels, you can do that. Just rethink your mapping sequence in the web UI. Just remember with SBUS, whatever you have this configured for, that number of channels will be fed into the SBUS stream. So you can use those channels within the stream or outside the stream if you remap them for PWM on your pins in the UI, just like I showed. I hope you like my video on how to set up Express LRS with SBUS and PWM. Make sure to smash that thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you know new material hits the channel. YouTube should recommend another video for you right about now. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and get out there and fly something.